Hello, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, colon cancer. Let me get my laser pointer here. And what a pathologist would look at as far as histology. If you remember back, histology is the study of tissues, and you can look at them at a microscopic level where you can see the cells and get a little more detail about what's going on within the cell. Here we're in the colon, and this would be a section that would be taken out. Uh, a colonoscopy is a procedure where uh, a colonoscope is inserted into the colon and it has a camera on it, and they can take pieces out and biopsy it and take a look at it under a microscope. So a pathologist is a medical doctor that would specialize in this area and what they look for, uh, we'll just kind of go over just an introduction introduction of what they look at. They're, you know, they go ahead and stage it and everything else too. But this is normal colon tissue for the most part. Uh, you can see the lumen. That's where the stool is passing through. And this is the innermost layer, the mucosa. <clears throat> and it's called the mucosa because has a lot of goblet cells, which are unice unicellular glands that secrete mucin, and that mucin will be on the surface, and it will uh, help keep the surface from drying out. It'll also help uh, lubricate the surface for the contents coming through. Over here, you can see that it, you know, you have a little bit of hyperplasia possibly going on here, where there's a little bit of extra cell growth. We'll talk about that. Uh, and underneath the mucosa, within right out, right underneath the mucosa, right along this area here, you have a basement membrane that all the epithelial cells attach to. And if you remember, epithelia are the, is the cell layer that um, lines the inside of our gastrointestinal tract or alimentary canal. And all the cells are tightly packed, and they all you know they're attached to a, uh, a basement membrane underneath that you have a thin layer of smooth muscle and uh, then you have the submucosa where there you have some small capillaries and lymphatic vessels and then you get to the, the thicker layer of smooth muscle called the muscularis externa which will help you know propelling the contents along so zooming in a little bit more, we can see the architecture of the cells a little better. So some of the cells that line our epithelia, so just to kind of get you oriented, up here we have the uh, mucin. You can see the mucin that's secreted by these goblet cells. And they're called goblet cells because if you trace them all the way down to the basement membrane, membrane you can see that they look like those medieval goblet glasses. And so they're producing mucin that then gets secreted on the surface. And you have these other cells that are kind of thin in between the goblet cells. And they're enterocytes. Entero means intestines. And cyte means cell. They, in the colon, these cells do a lot of water absorption. So they're taking a lot of water through and absorbing it into, back into circulation. And, you know, this area where it kind of goes down and comes back up, we're just getting more surface area there. So I want to show you a little bit about the difference between a normal cross-section. So this is a cross-section, and here's the, the lumen of the, the cross-section where the mucin is kind of getting secreted into. And uh, this is this is what it should look like. And then when it starts to to go awry a little bit, it'll look more like this, where you you don't have that distinct the di distinct cells of goblet cells and enterocytes, and that that nice circular lumen in the middle. Just kind of wanted to show that to you. So this is normal colonic tissue over here. And you can see that you have your epithelial layer and you have the basement membrane and underneath. This is zoomed out a little bit from the pictures we've been looking at. 
And then um, when you get uh, here, you get some hyperplasia. And hyperplasia just basically is an area of the colon that gets irritated. Maybe you're eating processed foods, low fiber, a lot of animal foods. Um, this area could get irritated, and it's not that big a deal if, you know, the irritant is removed. But uh, theoretically, if that irritant persists, some kind of carcinogen or chemical or, uh, like I said, a poor diet, this could progress into something uh, a little more serious. So you can see that hyperplasia through here is just, it just means hyper means more, plasia means growth. So you have a little bit more growth of the, the epithelial tissue here, but it, it's, you have a nice margin right here where nothing is getting through the basement membrane. But here, this just looks kind of nasty. You have, uh, this, this progresses into what's called uh, dysplasia, and this is a polyp. And with uh, dysplasia, um, the cells are, are kind of a step further. They're getting closer to uh, cancer. And what they, they would actually call this carcinoma in situ because these are uh, essentially cancerous cells, but they're, they're staying put. They're not, they're not penetrating this basement membrane and getting down here. So you can see the red in here. These are the little capillaries. And the white areas here, these are the lymphatic vessels. Remember, the lymph just kind of picks up uh, the fluid that's been pushed out by the, uh, the capillaries that, that kind of bring the nutrients to the tissue. And then some of the, the fluid gets kind of left in the tissue and the lymphatics will pick it up. So you have capillaries and lymphatics down here. And it's best to keep, you know, um, any kind of cancerous cell out and away from any capillaries or lymphatic vessels because that's the root of the problem when you start getting metastasis where the cancer spreads to other other tissues you may have cancer colon cancer that spreads to the liver or the lungs but this is how they get there is some of those cancer cells actually make their way through the basement membrane and into this area where they can find their way into a lymphatic vessel or a capillary. So the the whole point of a colonoscopy, and it's good to get these at you know starting about age 45, because the earlier you catch something like this, the better. And if the pathologist sees this to be a problem, they can cut and remove it out before something really bad happens, and you can actually cure a high, uh, early stage colon cancer by just resecting it out and getting all the margins where any kind of cancer cells may be located. And uh, that's been the best treatment for colon is just to catch it early with early screening and get it out of there. So here we progress to what you, uh, pathologists would call colon cancer. And I'm not gonna go into all the staging, but we can kind of get an overview of it. So here, you can see that uh, this area over here wouldn't be considered cancer. You have, you know, margin. You have a, a, you know, all these different layers are distinct and separate from each other. Whereas here, it's all kind of blending in together, and you're getting cancer cells that are making their way down here in the area where you have the capillaries and lymphatic vessels. So this is getting really dangerous. And a pathologist, when they're grading it, you know, they if it gets down here, you're getting closer to, you know, threes and fours. Um, because, you know, stage four being the, the worst prognosis and outcome. So um, this is this is termed colon cancer. And it's when all the, can the cancer cells penetrate through the basement membrane and get into the, some other layers. And um, a worse prognosis is they get into the capillaries and lymphatic vessels. So let's zoom in. And we're down here in the layer. We're down here where you can see uh, the cap, like here's a capillary and all the little red blood cells in there and the, the endothelium. The, 
the cells that line the capillary here. And then you have a little island of cancer cells here. And these cancer cells, they're not, they're, they're immature. You know, a lot of times cancer cells are like that where they're not differentiated. You know, you can't see these, uh, they're not small nucleus with a, you know, you know elongated for the, like the enterocyte that brings in the water. It's not definitely not a goblet cell. It's just kind of an immature cell. You have a clump of them here, and they're dying to get into one of these capillaries, and you can see that it's in proximity to it there, and very dangerous to, to get this intermingling between the cancer cells and conduits to get out of the colon. And I just wanted to show this one. We're kind of zooming out a little bit. Here's all the, the cancer cells up here, and some of them are starting to work their way down. And uh, this is the, all these little nuclei and cells that you can see here. This is the body's response to the cancer. Most of these are, are plasma cells, which are, uh, you know, you have the different types of white blood cells, and you have lymphocytes, and they can be either T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes. And B lymphocytes can, uh, when they're activated, can become plasma cells, and plasma cells make antibodies. And so a lot of these plasma cells are down here doing their best to make antibodies that may be able to combat this cancer. And this is a lot of times, you know, uh, I've heard that cancerine is always going on in the body where the, you have these, these mutated cells that are trying to, to work their way into a tumor and cancer and are a lot of times, especially when we're young and, and, and healthy, our immune system keeps us in check every time something like this tends to happen. So if you come in, if you become immunocompromised or, you know, as you get older and your immune system is not quite as efficient, um, some, you know, we may not be as, as good at keeping this cancer in check, keeping it from spreading or, uh, are even taking place. So I just kind of wanted to put this slide in to, to see that our body's trying and uh, if our immune system's strong and we, you know, do a lot of lifestyle modifications to help facilitate a, a healthy immune system, our chances of getting cancer are lessened.